The fourth, and in some ways my favorite psychological model, is Jungian process-oriented psychology, developed by Amy and Arnold, or called Arnie Mingel, and a whole cohort. It started with Arnie connecting dreams with body symptoms and it burgeoned from there. His very first book is called uh, Dream Body. He's written about 15 trade paperback books. Fascinating. Arnie and Amy work all over the world. They started with work with individuals and groups and expanded process work to the world stage where they have dealt with large conflicts. There are many videos and other resources online if you want to see them in action. I spent many years learning from them and their cohort, integrating process work into the work I did and appreciating their combined talents. He is a physicist and shaman in addition to being a top-notch facilitator and therapist and a writer of many books and articles and so on. She brings the arts into everything she does in the form of puppetry, nature collages, songwriting, filmmaking, and writing. For anyone interested in working with people in any capacity, I highly recommend them in this work. So here's a taste of process-oriented psychology. Process work increases possibilities and ways of observing and responding rather than being a set of new techniques. It takes into account the transpersonal aspects of the human experience and makes them a natural part of the work. For people un unfamiliar with the term transpersonal, combining spiritual development with psychological development. More explicit permission is given for all aspects of the human experience to be valued. In following the client's process respectfully, the resources available for problem solving are revealed to both client and consultant. We all exist in a field in which all roles and points of view are needed and welcome for the field to be complete. What we are consciously identified with at the time is called the primary process or sometimes first attention. The unconscious body signals, symptoms, dreams, and synchronistic events occurring simultaneously are called the secondary process or second attention. Both need to be respected by the process worker. The primary process must be honored first in order to move into the less aware areas. Imagine that you're a bird with human intelligence. You're able to walk on Earth in a particular location and also to fly above it where you can see in many directions. You know that it is possible to land in any spot you can observe. Process-oriented psychology provides this sort of perspective. It enables the process worker, that's what the facilitators called in this work, to be an exquisite observer of herself and others and the whole atmosphere or field, like that bird. Ghost roles and time spirits also hover around. This refers to people or situations mentioned but not present or what is part of any given group's past. For instance, work on racism always includes slaves and other possible roles. Both the client and the process worker will use any relevant experiences of their own, such as dreams or body symptoms, that arise during the client's work. 
Both will treat this as additional help and useful information that's in the field at the time. This contradicts the traditional belief in withholding the expression of the helper's inner experience in an attempt to be a projection screen or to manifest a formal professional persona. In process work, the projection process is called dreaming up and takes place as a lively interaction between the process worker and client. All is made explicit, experimented with, named, flipped over to its opposite side, experienced fully and put to good use. Clients are encouraged to take risks, embrace what they both fear and need in the company of a caring and open guy who is likewise willing to take risks and set appropriate boundaries when need be. Here's a quote from a process worker named Jan Dworkin. The most encompassing goal of process work with groups is to discover the background field or dream that binds the group and to give this field expression. The background field includes both majority and minority opinions, normal and deviant forms of behavior, allowing the field or global dream body to express itself often has the effect of changing the group into a community with a heart and wisdom at its center. I just love that quote. In applying this approach in organizational settings, all the levels of work occur from internal observation, to work on relationships, to group processes, to whatever the larger context is of what's happening in the outside world at the time. Multi-channel access is utilized, such as visual, auditory, kinesthetic, proprioceptive, relationship, and world channels. Sometimes, as in Gestalt work, an exercise is suggested from which everyone can learn to be a better observer or experiencer. Sometimes individuals are attended to while others witness the work. Sometimes the whole group is involved in a dynamic process of shifting roles and perspectives to try to grasp the nature of the whole field and what's happening. To sum up, by applying concepts from the rich source of dynamic therapies to our work with clients and organizations, we can enhance our understanding of their ongoing processes and become more sensitive and helpful consultants and facilitators. I hope you've been inspired to think about your own situations and how you can increase your insight and possibilities from some of these ideas.